Perfect. We're back live. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. We're live. We're back here. Uh, it's seven o'clock in Guyana, and uh, tonight we have a very interesting program planned for everyone. And of course, we're using the Caribbean internet, so uh, you know the production might be a bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we yeah. can hear you, Martin. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. You know. In Guyana, we have something called the Caribbean Wi-Fi, you know? And uh, from time to time, it does it, it has a mind of its own, right? So um, this evening, we have um, Jubilante Cutting. We have Dara. All right, I have no idea. Could you could you still hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah, we, can hear you. we have Jubilante Cutting. We have um, Dara Harper. We have Richard Purcell. And we have Samuel Szymanski. And uh, they're all very interesting persons within the animation space. And you can drop your questions right here during the live. Uh, big shout out to everybody who's messaging on YouTube right now. Uh, you could check us out on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitch. Oh, no. <laughs> on Twitch. We lost I our Heart hope. Radio. He's coming up. If you can still hear us, please send a message in the chat or send a message in the comments. If you're tuning in on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, I see several streaming sites operating at the same time. Good night. We are waiting until Martin comes back. But in the meantime, <laughs> good night. Good night. Thank you for confirming that you can hear me. Uh, we have myself, Jubilante Cutting. We have Mr. Richard Purcell, who's here, and we know you're excited. Hi, Ryan. Ryan is tuning in. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We have Dara Harper, the famous Dara Harper. And we also have <laughs> Szymanski, who is a very outstanding and talented storyboard artist. But don't worry, Rosanna. Don't worry, Ryan. We're going to be the Caribbean internet very soon <laughs> as we await Ryan, um, Martin's coming back. But in the meantime, uh, tonight is a very, very special evening. Um, we are currently promoting our new studio, GAN Studios, as well as a very exciting event, the Animation Writers Workshop, featuring our talented guests that are viewing here tonight. Um, I will first say welcome to Richard, Dara, and Sam. Uh, you are now being viewed by the Guyanese audience, predominantly the Guyanese audience, Guyanese in our diaspora and Caribbean nationals. And we're really, really happy to have you here. We're really happy to have you have a taste of Guyana. And to our international viewers, thank you for being here. Um, we really love having you uh, see what Guyana's animation industry and Guyana's creative conversation is about. So now I will ask Richard to introduce himself um, and to say hello from the, I should say, should I say the staff of SpongeBob or no? <laughs> Go ahead, Richard. Well, hopefully they're tuning in or maybe a, a handful, you never know. But uh, yeah. uh, I guess, hello, Guyana. <laughs> I, I wish I could be there in person. I uh, I so miss traveling, and uh, I guess this is uh, uh, the next the next best thing. So uh, so glad to meet everybody, and uh, uh, just happy to start the conversation along with uh, Jubilante and Martin and Dara and Sam. <laughs> awesome sauce, Martin. Yeah. Take it away. <laughs> uh, sorry, but uh, you know the Caribbean internet is something that we have to deal with um every time we're here. But um that's what you have. I love the bird. All right, that's cool. All right, so <laughs> let's start with um Jubilanti. So we didn't Jubilanti. introduce the bird. We can't move forward until we know this oh, bird. <laughs> How rude of me. Uh this is uh Kazi Szymanski. So she'll be joining us. She probably won't have much input. Wow. Thank you, thank you, um bird, um bird friend. Um, I also have a bird friend. I have two. I have two um, macaws. 
Yeah, Whoa. they're blue and they're yellow. And uh, yeah, I think they'd be friends with your birds too. Um, <laughs> all right. So just another thing. If you do drop a comment, uh, we'll have our comments displayed um, somewhere on the screen. And uh, yeah. So Jubilante is an attorney at law and graduate from the University of Guyana and the Hugh Wooding Law School in Trinidad and Tobago. Jubilante is also the founder and CEO of the Ghana Animation uh, Network Inc. and Gan Studios, where she pioneers, facilitates, and manages skills training opportunities in Guyana and the Caribbean. She consults and collaborates with experts, professionals, and stakeholders within the international animation and digital media spaces to execute commercial and community projects. All right. Then we have Sam Samansky. And he is a storyboard artist uh, working in the animation industry over the last six years. Uh, he has the pleasure, he's had the pleasure of working with various studios in LA, including Nickelodeon, Disney, Cartoon Network, and DreamWorks. He loves using the art of storytelling to bring uh, exciting characters and stories to life through the medium of animation. And he's excited to share his industry secrets with the world so <laughs> that you too can uh, tell interesting stories and bring them to life, right? Uh, big shout out to Rowan Singh. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. All right. Our next person is going to be Dara Harper, all the way from Detroit. You know, um, Detroit is where Eminem, is, uh, 8 Mile and everything, right? You know? And don't um, forget about the Motown sound, okay? The Motown <laughs> okay. sound, definitely. <laughs> right. So Dara um, is from Detroit, and she developed a passion for storytelling at a super young age. Uh, she's a novelist, uh, off Broadway, off Broadway playwright, uh, a journalist, an artist, and an award-winning filmmaker for *The Passing*, *Sweeter Without Sugar*, and won the Best African American Filmmaker Award in the Brooklyn Film Festival for her animated short *La Revolution*. Uh, she has also worked on projects for Disney, MTV, and Nickelodeon. And uh, Dara has authored several novels. And directed and wrote the CG animated feature film, The Sky Sprint, The Sky Princess, which is currently available on Vudu and Amazon Prime. So you could check that out uh, right after this live stream. Uh, she's also one. Well, one of her scripts was actually recently selected as a top 30 semifinalist from over 700 entries in the BET Project Create TV competition. A product of the Detroit High School for Fine and Performing Arts and uh, International School, uh, International Academy of Design and Technology in Chicago, Dara was accepted into the Harlem Writers Guild, whose past members include Maya Angelou and Terry McMillan. Right, and then finally we have Richard Purcell, and uh, Richard Purcell is best known for animation comedy writing. With his start on the Ren and Stimpy show, he earned his first Emmy nomination for the half an hour Nickelodeon MTV special Son of Stimpy. Uh, his period as a staff writer for Cartoon Network's Cow and Chicken led him uh, to story editing for I Am Weasel, which got him another Emmy nomination. Richard was a story editor of two seasons of Tom and Jerry Tales for Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network. He's also spent five years as Nickelodeon staff writer for SpongeBob SquarePants. Dun, 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 you know, dun, dun. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And he's that led to his first um, series Emmy win for story submission, Cephalopod Lodge. Uh, Richard is also a writer and developer of legacy properties. Now, you might be wondering what we're talking about here. Richard has worked on Mickey Mouse for Disney. Bugs Bunny for Warner Brothers, Woody the Woodpecker for Universal. He's also the head writer of. Hear what? If you were a child growing up, when we grew up, almost yes. everything on Cartoon Network he was a part of, right? Um, he's mm -hmm. also been the head writer of two seasons of uh, Mighty Magic Swords for Cartoon Network. He's written uh, written by credits for animated independent features on uh, Americano, which is currently on Netflix. So check that one out. Americano on Netflix and K9 World Cup on Amazon Prime. Check that out too. And he's also a writer of The Mighty Ones for DreamWorks and Hulu. And most recently, he became the co creator and executive producer of The Colony, which is a half hour adult animated sitcom for Netflix, starring 
Jack Black. And I believe Jack Black <laughs> is, is the same guy with um, Kung Fu Panda, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's my dude. I, I, for some reason, I connect with him, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, tonight, we're having some fun. Thank you for everybody. We have shout-outs from Guyana. We got shout-outs from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, who we got from Trinidad? We got Navid from Trinidad. Uh, Hi, we have everybody. We got Clark's Productions. We got Ian Newland here. We got Rosanna Tate. Uh, she's vibing with the lineup here. You have Abby J. Barker. They're here. We got Jessica. Jessica Studio. That's so awesome. Greetings from Michigan. So definitely, we have a big shout out from everybody. If you have questions, do not wait until the end because we just have about a half an hour or five to five minutes left. And this program is about to be lit. Um, are there any opening comments from anyone that's here already? Well, go, Dara. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. And I see you, Jessica. That's one of my students um, from Spex Howard College in Michigan. I'm from Detroit, guys, but I'm living in L.A. now. But Detroit will always be home, just to clarify that. I will always be a Detroit girl at heart. But I'm, right, I'm in crazy uh, Hollywood trying to make a go of it here. <laughs> All right. Great. Um, Richard, Sam, Juvie, any other comments from you? I just want to say welcome to everyone tuning in. I saw our president, Francine Leach, who's tuning in. Thank you, Francine, for joining us. And Ryan Keefe from North Carolina. Thank you for joining us tonight. And all of the participants who I see tuned in and popping up and commenting, thank you. We hope that this discussion is going to be, you know, enlightening and uplifting and really motivates you to know what you're looking forward to in our upcoming writers workshop and as martin said please place your questions now <laughs> perfect richard saw many comments from you before we continue oh just uh, uh, thanks for pulling me in oh sam yeah uh same here uh glad to be here uh thanks uh thanks for the opportunity to talk it's really exciting all right, great. Now, um, many of the persons here, we have uh, Ms. Gitting saying very impressive bios. In Guyana, we have an expression for the kind of panel that we have here, right? We would say that they're bad like yas, right? So <laughs> be, be, be honored that, that that is a term that we'll express to this, um, to this panel this evening, right? And we have, yeah, big shout out from the Guyana East Bank Tourism crew, and everybody's loving it. So if you have questions, again, just drop the questions if it's um, for somebody specific. Just um, put their name there, and we're going to have a nice time tonight. So let's start this one off with uh, somebody from, from uh, let's start this off with Richard, right? No, the reason why I want to start this off with Richard is because I was buying fish and chip today, which is a local um, delicacy in Guyana. And of course, it comes with some peppers. Um, Sam, Sam and I had a little conversation about these organic, natural um, peppers that I grow locally right here in Guyana. And uh, when I was talking with them, they were saying, you know, I heard y'all got somebody from SpongeBob, right? And I have a friend who's going to be signing up for the workshop. And I'm like, number one, I haven't seen this person in a while. And they already know what's going on. So you're buzzing in Guyana right now. So Richard, tell me, what was it like being a staff writer on SpongeBob? Uh, well, it was uh, just tough to get the gig, uh, you know, but... Uh, uh, they had me write 20 uh, premises um, uh, just, and that was like their standard, like for an, anybody who wanted to write. And out of those, uh, they picked one. And um, uh, and when I was on staff, uh, I, I pulled this story editor aside and said, um, "You, um, out of all the stories I wrote, you only picked one. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to... Uh, throw myself under the bus here, but why did you pick me um, if you only picked one story? And he said, because out of everybody else, we picked zero. So it's, uh, it was pretty um, uh, uh, competitive, um, but uh, since, uh, you know, the, the first year, you know, I was trying to catch up and watch everything that uh, had come before, so I couldn't repeat, but, um, uh, it, it was an amazing experience, and the people that I worked with, uh, from you know Doug Lawrence, who did the uh, he does the voice of um, 
of uh, Plankton and is also <laughs> a story editor on uh, on the classic series. Uh, we came up together uh, like we uh, I I saw his uh, portfolio when he tried to get a job on Ren and Stimpy and uh, we pulled him in and uh, just before that show ended, unfortunately. But uh, you know our our paths have uh, crossed several times and. Um, uh, and everybody that I worked with on on that series was amazing. Actually, a lot of people from Run and Stimpy background color, you know. So we um, we did um, um, in a way there wouldn't have been a SpongeBob um, without Ren and Stimpy because it uh, it did allow for the uh, um, uh, the creator driven uh, template to be reintroduced in cartoons, but uh, it's. Um, uh, it's an amazing, um, uh, I called it a well-oiled machine when I was there. They had done three seasons. Uh, it, uh, it crossed over into digital from film, and uh, it was uh, amazing to, uh, uh, to experience that. And it was, um, yeah, just to, to work with the, the, that crew uh, for, for that long was, uh, was a blessing. Awesome. And I hear, as you mentioned, um, you you kind of teamed up. You had a great collaborator that helped you to build your uh, studio from the ground up from nothing. And that is something that we right now in Guyana, we're doing. You have a couple of studios that are really shining. They're out there doing some really interesting stuff. And of course, Gun, well, Gun is, Gun is global, you know, and um, they're working on creating something that everyone could kind of see themselves as being a part of it, you know. And uh, with this in mind, I'd want to bring in Juby for a second because with the creative process, and of course, um, Dara and Sam, you could also give your feedback on this too. Um, how do you manage creative people? How do you manage people that are creative? Because uh, me as a creative, I, I do understand that there are some very talented persons, but to bring them to a stage where they're able to not only be creative, but be productive and actually create a, a product, you know, a product that could be enjoyed by the people out there. Uh, how is that? done you know or what are some tips you could use on managing uh creative people that is a very interesting question and i love it um i love it because my my background as i would say an entrepreneur first is um organization and structure i prefer things to be well managed in an organized way <laughs> so that that way you can you can make room for eventualities. And so the approach I have with creators, because while I might be a more um, organized person from a business and project standpoint, creators are organized from their creative process standpoint. And understanding their creative process helps you to manage your schedule and their schedules. And so for me, if I, if I were to advise um, a young studio or a business or anyone managing creators, I would say that uh, understand the creative process because it will make your business and your project more effective because you'll set realistic timelines. Um, even where those timelines are tight, um, you will find ways to simplify the process or have the creator consider simplifications so that that way uh, you can work in like a symbi symbiotic relationship. Um, also, too, my, my final point on it would be, um, today I spoke to a creator <laughs> who I met for the first time. And uh, the creator said to me, you know, I'm introverted. But at the same time, he was saying to me, uh, you know, like, I like this and I like my drawing. And that is something I noticed with creators. To um, outsiders, they may be introverted. Um, because they're thinking about all of the creative things they want to do. But the moment that you have a conversation with them, you realize how much of a ball of energy and fuel they are. And so for me, as someone managing creators or managing that process, I try to tap into the person, who they are, the things that they love, because that helps to take them sometimes outside of the creative pressure and more so focusing on, you know, like, I like ice cream or I like weary, weary pepper. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. or you know like, uh, you know you create light moments and i think that 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 is something that um creators appreciate when those who are managing or helping to manage their process really values them as individuals and also um, considers the creative process and scheduling along with an entire project's schedule 
Perfect. Now, um, Dara, I'm going to ask you about story development because I know that's something that the Sky, the Sky Princess really, it, it took a lot to be able to pull off a project like that with the resources that you had available and the kind of networking you did. But right now, I want a little feedback from the Spice Boss himself, Sam. Uh, Samuel, <laughs> tell me about why uh, the storyboarding process is so important uh, in the animation timeline. Give me a little feedback on that, Sam. Sure. So uh, for people who aren't uh, super familiar with the animation process, uh, the scripts get written by geniuses like Richard. And then uh, once they're approved, they get sent to the storyboard artists. And we will take them and basically translate the writing into visual language so that uh, the designers, the animators, and everyone else down the line knows exactly what to draw. So the storyboard artists are responsible for, you know, figuring out what the show is going to look like. And uh, to do that, they have to have uh, a decent amount of knowledge of uh, design, storytelling, writing, uh, cinematography, so that they're giving everyone else uh, the right assignments and not too much work. All right, got you. And uh, here's another fun fact about Sam. About, um, Sam. He's actually worked on um, Star Trek a little bit with Nickelodeon. So if you have your Star Trek questions, please ask um, the Spice Boss himself, right? Now over to you, Dara. Is story development like a natural process or is it something that needs to be structured, you know, especially for Caribbean people? I think that everybody has a story to tell. We're all storytellers in some form or fashion, even if it's just you telling a story to your cousin, you know, outside, like taking a walk at the park, like everybody has a story to tell. But when we, when we think about structure, sometimes people feel like constrained by that because they're like, well, I don't wanna have to do it this way. Like, why do I have to do it in that order? So to me, structure is essential in the sense that it's almost like I use a lot of cooking analogies when I teach, but I'm using an analogy about food and cooking because everybody loves to, you know, have a I good agree. meal. Endorse, so <laughs> it's like it's it's like you have when you're baking a cake and somebody left out the sugar, you know, it's, it's like you don't want to miss an important ingredient. So that's why you want to follow um, some type of format. And then they talk about once you learn the rules, you can break the rules, right? But before we break the rules, we have to learn the rules. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. Once we learn the rules, we, we don't want to be making cakes without sugar. I mean, it's just like, okay. But you may say, okay, instead of, you know, um, white sugar, I'm going to use brown sugar. Or I'm going to use raw sugar. Or I'm going to sweeten it with something else. And, you know, add something else and it puts your own spin on it. So once you get that foundation, you'll be able to execute whether we're focused here on animation. And I love animation, especially during the time of ongoing pandemic, because we can be making animations right where we are, right from our homes. We can work with each other virtually. Voice actors can record in their studios at home. Like animation production never stopped. So this is a this is a great opportunity for people that have a story to tell. But. Um, that being said, once you take this workshop, you're going to have the foundation to not just tell the animated story, but execute any type of written story with that structure in mind. All right, perfect. We actually have a couple of questions coming from the audience right now. They're really excited about everybody here. And uh, I'm going to mention the questions and then I'm going to head back to you, Richard, because I really want you to talk about our relationship with, um, with Dwayne McDuff McDuffie. And he is the guy behind uh, Static Shock. And the reason why I, I mentioned him a little bit is because of how transformational that character was, not only in the U.S. and in the developed economies around the world, but even in Guyana. I remember that was one of the shows you'd come home and look at. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd probably look at Danny, you know, you then look at SpongeBob, you know what I mean? But um, I, I'd want you to, to talk a little bit about how he influenced your drive and your creative process. But let me get to these questions, right? So we have a couple of questions. Um, Kendra, I think Kendra needs a link. Kendra Drix, uh, please send her the link somebody for the animation workshop. She's ready to sign up. She wants to know if you need a compete, if you need Zoom or whatever. Kendra, we got you. Jublanti got you. Her team is going to contact you ASAP, right? We have a question from Clark's Productions. Um, what style of writing may be the best style for a television production? 
So that's coming out from Clark's production. Uh, we have another question about what's the best cartoon maker app to buy. Uh, that's a great one. And I think uh, Dara, I know Dara did a really um, interesting thing when it came to developing um, her production, Disguise Princess. So uh, maybe she could touch on that or even some because of the kind of projects he's been on to. And uh, we have a question for Richard from Ryan. Uh, what was it like to be a part of the industry during the transition from cell animation to digital animation? And I think that's something that you even mentioned in your intro. Wow. And as I say these questions, a bunch of other questions are coming here, right? So somebody made a comment about structure also makes uh, the execution of the workflow efficient. That's from Navid. Uh, we have another comment from Ryan for Martin and Juby. What is your opinion? What, in your opinion, is a key aspect of Caribbean cultural storytelling that stands out for the rest of the world? I could tell you a little bit about that one. Um, and uh, I, Kendra also says I wanted to know more about storyboarding. So thank you for that question. And finally, Clark is also saying, what animation software do you use? Now, um, we're probably not going to answer every question, but uh, everyone has heard the questions and we're going to be thinking about it. So Richard, um, just before you address those questions or you share your opinion there, tell me about how uh, Dwayne McDuffie uh, influenced your drive and your creative process. Well, uh, I mean, we go, I met him um, uh, when he was going to high school um, at uh, Roper Country Day in, uh, outside of Detroit, um, where we all grew up. And, uh, um, and he, he was my best friend's other best friend. But um, uh, so we, we, we just, uh, he, they went to New York and I went to Los Angeles. Um, um, and, uh, uh, but uh, when we built Milestone Comics and uh, created Icon and uh, Static and all of these amazing uh, black superheroes and comics first, and uh, they, uh, came came out west um, to uh, to do the Static Shock uh, series with Warner Brothers. It, it had been uh, part of DC's. Um, it was kind of folded in to uh, to their their comic making. And um, but um, uh, maybe it was just because Dwayne um, he uh, was um, well he um, he was a very serious guy. And um, it was really tough to get a get him to laugh. Um, so uh, uh, it um, uh, it was interesting, you know, to um, to see how he um, just his his being was. Um, uh, I guess um, he he just had a very serious approach which uh, i would I, I was a bit more combative with you know uh, um but uh, you know like i said it was tough to get him to laugh but uh he was so driven and he was so um uh uh, uh um uh, what uh i forget i'm trying to come up with a perfect word for it but he he just was so so he was he's Ten times uh, faster uh, a writer than I could be. Ten times, like faster thinker. Like I'm, I was always the the dreamy, the dreamy one with the with the um, uh, wise cracks, you know. And he was always the serious one that um, um, would stand his ground and uh, um, uh, and had very strong opinions. Um, but uh, you know, one of my favorite quotes of his is, you know. You don't feel um, as real uh, if you don't see yourself reflected in the media, and um, uh, he took he took it uh, very seriously, uh, being represented and having strong characters of color that were um, represented in, in the media, and uh, and he was um, uh, so effective at. Uh, uh, at making that happen, so I'm I'm just you know props to him for 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 doing what he did in uh, his short uh, uh, time on this planet. You know he must have known that his uh, his clock was compressed, and you know he just uh, got it out. And uh, uh, and you know I'll I'll talk to him from time to time, especially if I'm on a deadline. 
you know, let me <laughs> and knock this out uh, efficiently, quickly, and uh, uh, without any loss to the quality. Perfect. So. And, and what's interesting about that is that many persons might look at it as just being like an artistic expression. But recently, when I've been looking at it, it's more about like the writers who write for animation. They're very deep thinkers. And looking at it, cartoons that I looked at when I was younger and looking at it now, I'm like, how are you able to address these sort of psychological issues, these sort of social issues in something as simple and as palatable and as digestible as animation, you know? And especially when it comes to like the comedy scene too, because comedy kind of allows you to address um, deep social cracks or, or fragments or whatever in ways that are palatable. So you're able to really enjoy it and you're able to experience it. And uh, you're also able uh, to kind of hide some unique pieces of our pockets of meaning when, it come, when, you, when you have a great writer on board. So that's something that I, that I really admire and something I have been noticing uh, the more and more I look at animation, right? So let me just um, pivot a little bit. So somebody was asking about software. What is the best software to use for um, animation uh, for beginning animators? So does anyone want to share an opinion on that? I'll, I'll chime in here. Um, I was gonna say that the industry standard for most animations, as Richard and Sam will probably back me up on this, a lot of them use Maya, but I am a big fan of Blender, which is free and is open source. And you can download it right now, blender.org. And it, it enables you to do 3D and 2D animation. It's pretty robust. And a lot of my friends, I have friends who are um, doing like opening credits for Dancing with the Stars and doing all types of professional uh, industry work using Blender now. So to me, like when I first started with Blender like 10 years ago, it was like really just kind of like a hobbyist thing, a small community. But now it's really flourishing and you can download a lot of free tutorials on YouTube and have at it. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun and it, to me, it's very accessible. I took Maya in college and I've used Maya to animate, but I, it was like a little bit of a disconnect for me, but I kind of, mm -hmm. once you, Blender is like, I don't know, when, when it clicks, it just clicks. And then, of course, you have the Adobe stuff. So there's this really cool software called Adobe Character Animate, where all you need is a computer with a webcam, and you can create your little character in Photoshop. And then, like, when you move your head, it moves his head. When you blink, it, you know, it lip syncs to your... It's really cool. So I'm a big fan of Adobe Character Animate, too, because that's a lot easier to use than Blender or Maya or anything like that. And you can create some pretty neat looking things. And some of the TV networks are using that too. So mm -hmm. it's kind of up to you as an artist. But um, I love Blender. It's free. It's open source. But I think the Adobe character anime thing you can get for maybe like 10 bucks a month. It, you know, um, so it's just up to you. Yes. And the, the um, 10 bucks would probably be the equivalent of maybe 2000 Guyana dollars for anyone interested, but Sam, you were going to say? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to jump off of that with a few more uh, programs I'm aware of that are unfortunately not as affordable, but sort of industry standards, just to mention them. The, the first thing I want to jump off of is, uh, yeah, Blender is an incredibly robust system. Uh, there's an artist I'm a fan of who goes by uh, Worthy Kids uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If anyone looks up his cartoons, you can see that you know, the vast uh, amount of different things you can make with that program. So it's very powerful. Uh, you know, from the writer's side, it seems to me like uh, an app called uh, Final Draft is uh, mm. very popular for the writing. For, for storyboarding, there's uh, a program called Toon Boom Storyboard Pro, which is yeah. uh, what I mainly use, and that's that's very popular and very uh, makes the storyboarding workflow very efficient. Yes. Uh, and I would also say uh, the suggestions uh, for three D animation are very solid. There's a program called Harmony, made by the same company as uh, Storyboard Pro, which can let you do sort of puppeted animation, like you build a rig and then move the character around, uh, similar to. Uh, 
the Adobe program that was mentioned. So I'm not super familiar with either of those, but I think uh, all of those are sort of industry standards as well, as well that are uh, worth looking into. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Sam. I'll add a free version for script writing because I did not, I mean, Final Draft is what I use for all the, when I'm submitting a script to Disney, obviously it's in Final Draft. But yeah. when I started off years ago, it was Celtics. You can down, yes. you can get that for free too and get the free online version and then unfortunately it does have the watermark that says this script was created in celtics if you don't buy the subscription but yeah. you know if you get a little savvy with your pdf you can strip those out but none of us celtics is free yeah, yeah. there you go it's uh <laughs> very very good sometimes you just gotta start wherever you are so yep, yep. If, you, if you don't have any, you know, if you don't have much money, just just start creating. Don't worry too much about the software stuff because software is just a tool. You know, it's just That's like right. some people use this kind of paintbrush and other people use that kind of paintbrush. As you get better, more experience, more money, more opportunities, you can buy better paintbrushes. But sometimes you just have to start with wherever you got. And, as and long in as the making content. And I think in the beginning, uh, you know, who, you don't need to buy a uh, final draft um, to to write a script. It's uh, uh, they. I mean, it, it is the uh, the standard in the uh, uh, in the business, uh, uh, but it's also um, uh, unless you're um, freelancing scripts and need it to uh, need people to work off of your copy. If you're working at um, working from your own script. Um, it's it's just a format. Um, uh, you don't need all of the uh, uh, the the tricks and you know shortcuts. Um, you can set tabs. I mean, when I first learned screenwriting, I had a manual typewriter and I pulled the tabs out and I put them where I wanted the kachunk <laughs> to go, and uh, and did it that way. There's um, any number of um, formatting. Um, uh, templates that you can download and do it in uh, uh, Microsoft Word or you know text. Uh, just uh, when I'm writing short form stuff, I will just text it, text an email to myself and cut and paste it later. You know, because uh, I I don't want to have to uh, rely on on having uh, you know final draft up and ready and you know. Uh, when I'm just collecting ideas, uh, I'll just email it to myself from my phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, this is a really excellent um, conversation and discussion about software um, that creators can use because um, oftentimes persons would come and they would say, you know, what tools do we need to use and how can I really get into the industry? And so um, for me, it was really, I was really happy that you all highlighted that there are resources, resources that are free, resources that we usually use on an everyday basis without necessarily having to go pro or purchase the, the more advanced stuff, software. But depending on your style of art or work, or even depending on um, how far you want to go in the industry, you also have a, a wide variety of software that were mentioned here tonight. And I'm, I'm really happy that you you address these issues, panelists. Um, I also saw some really exciting feedback coming into the, the room, Zariel saying that when writing animated shorts, most persons worry a lot about not being able to tell a complete story in a short amount of pages. And I think um, Dara, this may, this may be something you want to touch. And she says, what advice would you give to those writers that worry about that? Okay, so I think that it sometimes can be hard to condense your story. And it's hard, hard, hard when you come to Hollywood and you have to actually tell your story in a log line, which is a one sentence. They say it can be two sentences, but in my experience, I've sold the most scripts and optioned the most scripts when it's just one. One sentence that explains the whole story, that's tough, right? Mm -hmm. But once you get that sentence, then you can make it into a short format or a longer format or, you know, come in, boiling your idea down to one simple concept. That's that's hard to do. But once you do it, that gives you the foundation to make to have like a shorter format for storytelling. 
then sometimes you may find yourself. Um, I find it's better to give people like have a little mystery and leave them wanting more. Trust the audience and you don't have to over explain everything. So it's better to have like a short story that engages them and maybe makes them wonder what happens next. And maybe now you can have your investors lined up for part two than to try to like stretch yourself so thin to try to condense everything into one project initially. So if you think about it like in almost like cutting up a pie into smaller bits, you know, you have to think of it that way. If it's a series, if it's a short animated short, if it's whatever, but everything needs, even if it's a an hour and a half or two hour movie, it still needs that one sentence log line that bring that pulls you in. One sentence. That's it. Where you describe your main character, the main conflict, and kind of the hook that makes us want to know and, and want to watch it. Just one sentence though. That's not easy to do. It takes practice. Talking talking about one sentence, um I've I've been trying to one sentence in. But the internet, you know, and my part again has been preventing me from saying that one sentence, right? But excellent point, Dara. Excellent point, Richard, Slam, Juby, everybody. I'm glad I'm back here. I, I don't know how long I have because, you know, the internet again has gone over. You know, I think we could probably turn this into animation too. But uh, a question was asked. And since that question has been asked, people have been messaging Juby, messaging me, messaging all of us. They're wondering what Guyana has to offer. Why should Guyanese care about getting into animation? Is there yep. anything special, right? Now, what I would say, I know Jubilanti and, and everyone else on the panel has a perspective on this, but I think from Guyana, uh, there are a lot of cultural um, nuance, nuances, you know, there, there's certain cultural elements that are absent from, absent or, or they're not really addressed in the international, on the international level, you know? I've never seen duck curry mentioned as a food. You know, or as some of you might call it, curry duck. I've never, I've never seen that <laughs> mentioned in any animation. I've never seen somebody talk about a back dam, right? A back dam is something where uh, you're, a lot of the food, fresh produce, and all of that comes from the back dam in Guyana. Whether it's the back dam in areas like Perica or other areas, you know, it's uh, there are certain cultural nuances that we as Guyanese could also bring to the stage. You know, yeah. another interesting one is our indigenous communities have some very unique stories like the story of Makanaima and the story of Kai, you know? And uh, I'll give you a little piece. Like there's the tallest single drop waterfall in the world is actually based in Guyana. And it got its name from this guy called Kai, who was a chief. And essentially there was a war between two tribes and he sacrificed himself by, by going in a canoe and uh, bringing peace to the area. And uh, that story has never been animated. So just like in Mexico, I, I, I remember, Richard, when we were talking, you mentioned about um, Americano, how they were able to bring in their unique cultural um, uh, dynamics to the stories. I, I remember you mentioned that. Guyana has that to offer. Sam, I know you mentioned uh, Star Trek, and I know Star Trek was one of the most pivotal uh pivotal productions when it came to bringing in diverse characters, you know. I'm still learning to speak Klingon, you know, but um, <laughs> hopefully someday I might be able to effectively communicate in Klingon. And I think Sky Princess really addresses something that is unique, even down to the color palettes that you use to describe the Sky Princess and, and the characters there. So Thank you. When it comes from Guyana, from Trinidad, I want to see, from Trinidad, I want to see animated doubles. I want to see, and doubles is like it's something one. that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a sandwich kind of thing. It's a food thing. I want to see people from Barbados talking about cheese and bread. I want to hear accents like that when it comes to animation. And it's not a situation where I think that uh, they need to be put to the front necessarily, but there are other stories that could enhance mm -hmm. stories that already exist. And we've seen that mm -hmm. with uh, productions like Moana. We've seen that with productions yeah. right. like all across the, the spectrum or Even, en Encanto that just came yeah, out Encanto, yeah Encanto was yeah. great um Richard did Americano you know which yeah. was awesome because you know it's it's basically a story that you know is takes place in Mexico and they infuse cultural elements but they have like a universal appeal that brings others in 
So yeah, telling stories from Guyana with some some I would love can somebody send me some curry goat? I mean, <laughs> yes. <Got you. laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm surprising that you mentioned that, Dara, because um while I was talking about So I need Sam, to check my mailbox <laughs> when exactly. <laughs> Okay. We'll and we got a cup of you right there. Yes. Right there, we got a cup of you. I told Sam, I said, Sam, we will bring some weary, weary pepper for you because that was one of the first questions Sam asked me. Sam said, I hope you don't feel any way, but um, do you know about weary, weary pepper? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was floored and just impressed that Guy Guyanese culture is actually known around the world. But do people really know that it's Guyanese? And for me, um, just uh, talking on the topic, I I do believe and I, I strongly echo Martin's uh, thoughts that we are a diverse people. When you think about Guyana, we're the only English speaking country um in South America, bordered by uh, countries that speak different languages, Surinamese, Venezuela, Spanish, Brazil, Portuguese. We have Caribbean mm -hmm. neighbors. When you think about our heritage, we've been made up of several peoples, Africans, Chinese, Indians, Europeans, Portuguese, or indigenous peoples. And, and for me, it's like being able to tell the cultural mix because we are not in silos. We've mixed so well as a country that for me, it's like being able to tell and to showcase that would have the same effect as the um, social media post that I saw with a little child that looks like the character in Encanto. And for me, it's being able to have our children, our young people, being able to see and hear our culture on, on the big screen and say, hey, that's me. Hear them talking Guyanese or hear them talking in the Bayesian accent or the Jamaican accent. And I mean, that level of representation um, applying industry principles is something that I believe will help the world. Um, Dara, you pointed out earlier and rightly so that animation right now in the world has been used as a tool really to bring people together, to bring a level of, of comfort and enjoyment, even though we're in the context of a, a global pandemic that has caused all of us to be locked in. And to me, having culture see themselves on screen in a in a global context like this is so important and, and so much so that i want to say thank you to all of the guyanese caribbean people tuning in wherever you are thank you for being here thank you for being part of this and even to our distinguished guests martin thank you all for being a part of this because I mean, this matters. <laughs> this matters a whole lot. And um, I'm just happy to be here because yeah. representation indeed matters. And us being able to tell our stories, you know, we see a lot of the Western culture here. But what about seeing ourselves? And I think all of us on the, on the panel has, um, we've eloquently said it, that having that representation is important. And in local language, you could say that, you know, Guyanese and Caribbean people, we either make things spicy or we make things sweeter, you know? So definitely add the little spice or the little sweetness to <laughs> your productions by working along with us. And yeah, I well, it's an honor. It's really an honor to be here with you all. It really is. Oh, yeah. So and happy to be a part of a chance to tell these indigenous stories and really put by Guyana on the map as a place where animation can happen, great storytelling can happen. You know all of the wonderful things about the culture that the world doesn't know this would this would be a great platform and i know people are coming in from all over the world here too but yes it, it is guyana's time yes. <laughs> well, yeah. we're known right now for island gas and now we're going to be known for animation richard you're about to highlight why guyana is the greatest country in the world <laughs> <laughs> i just well i it must be uh, and I want to go and I want to, I want, and since I can't, I want you to come to me. And I think that's a good way to uh, uh, just cross pollinate. I mean, just, I wanted to touch on uh, another quote uh, that, uh, that Dwayne McDuffie said, you know, there's something very powerful about seeing yourself represented. And, yeah. um, and I, and we need, we need to see everybody. And uh, uh, I'm, uh, I, I also know, I mean, just doing my little Wikipedia research, 
uh, I love silent movies. And then um, to see that the lost world had its origins in Guyana, uh, I want to see your dinosaurs. I had no idea you, you had dinosaurs in your jungle. Not Come anymore. on. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something that's interesting too. Do you know from Pokemon there's a character called Mew? No way. There's Pokemon called Mew. Now, don't take my word for it. Just Google where Mew is from. <laughs> Mew is from Guyana. I think he's oh, the biggest great. superstar we've ever had. And that was by Pokemon. So definitely big shout out to everybody who's behind Pokemon. And to <laughs> all of you who are looking at it, yes, Mew is a Guyanese. Right? So... um <laughs> Thank but you, the next big one. superstar is going to come right from this room. I see some people in some chats with some great ideas. I can see they're ready to go. Ready to so go. They're, they're going to uh, they're gonna eclipse that Pokemon character. <laughs> well, we could only hope. You know, we could only hope. All right. So we don't have a lot of time yet, but left. But a bunch of persons are asking some questions. Like, they're asking, when, how many workshops are you going to be doing? When are there still spaces? One set of questions, right? So, Jubilanti, in a quick little piece, could you just tell people how the workshops are running this week yes. and uh, what to look forward to? Yes. So, we have the Animation Writers Workshop that will be run from Wednesday to next Friday. It's only going to be held on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Mondays, excluding today. So, next week, Monday, you'll be here again, um, well, on the platform next Wednesday next Friday as well as Wednesday and Friday. Um, the workshops will be run in the evening. Um, this would be from about 6 to 7 p.m. Guyana time, um, the equivalent being 2 to 3 p.m. in uh, PST in LA. Uh, we also have a special workshop. So off of the Animation Writers Workshop, um, this is exclusive information I'm giving here. Um, and, but we will be promoting really soon another workshop. We have a series lined up, but the next immediate one is happening this Saturday. I will send out forms pretty soon for you to register. And this is going to be exclusively on storyboarding. Um, as Sam mentioned, storyboarding is it's very important to the animation process. It's one way you can visualize your script um, before the animation process begins. So we'll have that two hour session that's running uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. Guyana time. And if you're an artist, whether a fine artist or a digital artist, the storyboarding workshop is going to be um, beneficial to you. However, if you're participating in the animation writers workshop, the storyboarding workshop is going to be complementary to your experience. So any new persons coming in for storyboarding only, they will not benefit from the animation writers workshop, but the animation writers will benefit from the storyboarding workshop. Yes, we do have registration still open. It's closing on the 2nd of February, the first day of our first workshop in the animator writer series. And uh, just like Jubilanti mentioned there, we have a uh, sneak peek from Sam. So check this out. This is a third second um, clip. So um, check it out. Take this where the last hope of the human race Embark on a journey into outer space Last stop, there's no going back We're on our way now Lost in space Lost in space I love Excellent. it. Excellent. I love it. And what you just saw there actually is an animatic. And Sam, you can correct me if I'm wrong, which is a compilation or combination of storyboards. So before you get yeah. to that really fancy version you just saw there, it's hard work. Artists, oh, yeah. if you're in the room, you have to draw several storyboards to get the output. So uh, thank you very much for sharing that, Ma Martin and Sam and Daro. Anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's absolutely right. It's a uh, takes a bunch of work to get to that point. Uh, you got to throw in the, the artistry uh, and then time all the storyboards uh, out with the music and the dialogue. But uh, the end result is always very fun. All right, perfect. Indeed. And are there any closing thoughts? I know the time is cutting down. It's really coming down to an end. But um, just before we have the closing thoughts from Richard, Dara, Sam, and Juby. Um, wow, Sam, you got somebody asking, when is the first episode coming out of Dogs in Space? Oh, it's out on Netflix. Yeah. Yep. It's all, yep. yeah, it's all out. Let's get it done. Um, right. So I'll just mention a little bit about who you, who you have here. Uh, 
number one, we have um, Dara here. She's the writer behind Sky Princess. She's also done an amazing production when it comes to The Passing, uh, which is a novel that she she developed. And there's currently like a Netflix um, series that's kind of, you know, there's a close connection there. Um, and she's an award-winning um, writer, by the way. So don't forget to check out Dara Harper's Sky Princess on Voodoo. Check it out on Amazon Video, Amazon Prime, and uh, show that support there. We have Sam. Sam is uh, he's done some work with Nickelodeon on uh, Star Trek series. Uh, he's done some amazing work with DreamWorks, and uh, it's it's he's really cool, right? Some really cool stuff he's been doing. Uh, Jubilanti is the one who's behind Ghana Ghana Animation Network. She's doing all of that hard organizational work. And definitely, <laughs> if you have any questions about anything to do with these workshops, do not message me, right? Do not message me. Jubilanti has all of the information, and she's going to help you to come on board. Just get to her, because I think there are only one or two spots based on the last count. I could be wrong, of course, but definitely check out Jubilanti. And then we had Richard tonight. If you grew up in the 1990s, uh, like I grew up in the 1990s, almost every animation on Cartoon Network he's been affiliated with. You know what? Let me get, let me get a list again. Yeah. I'll give you an idea. Of one. <laughs> right? So if you remember Ren and Stimpy, if you remember Cow and Chicken, if you remember I Am Weasel, every time the guy used to say I Am Weasel, right? If you remember Tom and Jerry Tales, that's even before my time. If you remember Cartoon Network, Warner Brothers, if you remember SpongeBob SquarePants, dun, 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 you know what I mean? If you remember SpongeBob SquarePants, he's been associated with it. Mickey Mouse on Disney Channel, Bugs Bunny with uh, Warner Brothers, Woody the Woodpecker, Mighty Magic Swords from Cartoon Network, Americano on Netflix, K9 World Cup on Amazon Prime. And he's also done something amazing with Jack Black uh, that's on Netflix, uh, The Colony. And uh, yeah, definitely we have some juggernauts who are going to be teaching uh, not only people from Guyana, but from around the region. And uh, you see, we have Carol Webster. Um, Richard, she's saying that she loved cow and chicken. So literally all of these things are on board. And uh, I'd also mention again that he also uh, knew uh, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne McDuff McDuffie, who is behind Static Shock. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have an amazing week, an amazing two weeks ahead. Thank you to all of the sponsors. Tonight was sponsored by Messiah Capital. And uh, yeah, we have some interesting stuff there too. So don't forget to buy a cup of coffee, buy the merch, have some fun with it. Oh, wait, 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 we have some interesting stuff. <laughs> Chicken's first kiss. <laughs> we have some real juggernauts here, you know what I mean? Yes. The next and one is me. Dr. Fantasy Fantasy. Foot. I am Weasel, yeah. <laughs> So that's amazing. So yeah. we oh, literally talk about go. the people who <laughs> impacted your childhood here, right? And uh, that is SpongeBob himself in Bikini Bottom. So um, <laughs> yeah, we're having a nice show and tell here. And, uh, I thought you were going to show us something else, you know? But um, thank you for in the class, in the class, in the class. Yeah. So don't forget to sign up for the class. There are only a couple of seats left. And uh, they're really going to be spending time walking through the animation process with you. And uh, yeah, again, like, don't forget Table Talk, buy the merch, have some fun, become a subscriber, join us on Patreon. You're going to see, uh, well, you're going to hear us on iHeartRadio. You're going to hear this podcast on uh, Spotify. You're going to hear this on anywhere that you listen to podcasts, you're going to hear us. Uh, yeah. Big shout out to everybody in Korea who's watching us on um, Nemo TV. Big shout to everybody who's in the crypto space with D Life. Big shout out to everybody who's on Twitch, who's on everywhere else. And uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, we have one uh, question here. Do you know about creating animation? Do you have to know? Oh, so they're asking, do you have to know about creating animation before signing up? Nope. You just need to sign up. Just sign up. Just <laughs> all you need to do is just sign up, right? So yes. let's have the final thoughts. Uh, let's start off with I, I don't know who wants to go first, but um, short and sweet, and let's go. What are your Before final thoughts? Before my final thoughts, Martin, I just want to say shout out a big special shout out to members of our team at the Guyana Animation Network Inc. and Gan Studios 
Francine, Precious, thank you both for being here right now. Um, we do have other members who are on the back end, and I just want to tell them thank you. We really appreciate the hard work you're doing. I also want to say thank you for the members of our community who've been in support of our work, my church, uh, the First Assembly of God Church, Workmanville, CARICOM, which is our Caribbean community. This is the, the body responsible for the region. Thank you. I see Miss Jennifer Britton here, who is a representative of CARICOM, as well as the program uh, manager for ICT for Development. So thank you, uh, Ms. Britton, for being here. Ms. Carol Webster of the Guyana Economic Development Trust. Thank you to the business community and the creative community for being here tonight. So I think that might be my short bit. Just want to say thank you to my community. All right, great. Thank you, Jubilanti. Now, give us your final thoughts, Richard, Dara, Sam. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm just thankful to be here. Uh, I'm really grateful to, uh, you know, have the chance to uh, come on and share my thoughts and uh, be part of this really exciting process. So uh, thank you for inviting me on. Uh, this is awesome. Perfect. Dara? I just want to say it's an honor. And for everybody that signs up for the writing animation workshop, I really look forward to walking you through the whole process step by step. We're going to have a lot of fun. Perfect. And, and, uh, and you know, big shout out to uh, Jubilante and uh, Martin for 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 just doing this. I know uh, uh, it's a heavy lift and uh, uh, and big props to you for, for doing it. I uh, 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 met Jubilante uh, uh, when she was in high school. Uh, she came to one of my presentations when I was at the Anime uh, Caribe, uh, Caribbean uh, Animation Festival in Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, um, it's uh, uh, the Caribbean, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd love to be able to just uh, fly over and pop from island to island and explore and go to Guiana and and uh, and have a guided tour. Um, we can't, unfortunately. So um, so we have to bring Guyana to the world, and uh, um, and I'm I'm happy to help. You know, however we can. It all it all starts with. Uh, uh, one word, and then a sentence, and then a paragraph. So uh, we'll be um, um, we'll be uh, just uh, mapping it out in uh, in the writers' workshop, and uh, it'll it'll continue. I can't wait to see the final products. Uh, you know, some actual um, festival films. It's going to be very exciting to see every step along the way. So it all starts with something. It starts with an idea. Yes. Awesome. It starts with an idea. Perfect. And um, I'm not going to hype um, what Gan has anymore because I don't want to get y'all too hype. But it's literally <laughs> hype. Right? Gan this year is just hype. Straight through the whole year, right? Uh, yeah, so man. thank you again. Uh, sorry, Jubilant, you didn't make your comment. Did you make a final comment? Yes. Well, just let me insert there also. Thank you, Richard. And a special shout out to the Anime Creep Festival. For anyone wanting to be part of a global and regional community of animators um, based here in the Caribbean, the Anime Creep Festival. They're on Facebook, everywhere you can you can Google. <laughs> Anime Creep Festival is there and especially to the founder, Camille Salvon Abrahams and her team who have been a major support to GAN as well as the University of Trinidad and Tobago. So thank you so much and thank you again to Guyano community here, to the creative community. Thank you for your support. All right. Thank you again. Like and subscribe. Have some fun. And Sam, the next time, whenever he's on again, he's going to tell us about his favorite Star Trek character. Right? It's data. So thank you, Richard. Thank you, Dara. <laughs> thank you, Sam. Thank you. This was Table Talk Think Tank. And uh, we'll see you guys um, some other time. You know, later thank on you. Take care. Thank you, Martin. Bye-bye. <laughs>